New home prices well above their highs at the peak of the housing bubble a few years back. But new home sales are barely off the bottom. For more, let's bring in New Edge Director of Market Strategy, Robert Van Battenberg. Scott Martin, he's still joining us in Chicago, and we've also got Steve Rusciuto. He's uh, here in New York with us. Robert, I want to turn to you first because this is fascinating research you've been working on here for your clients. Um, the, the housing market and the disconnect that we're seeing, home prices continue to go up, but home sales, what are you seeing? Well, I, I, th I think the big, one of the big problems in the U.S. economy today is, is that you have a widening income inequality. Uh, in fact, uh, there was research done recently by, I think, uh, University of Berkeley that said that the income inequality in the United States is now higher than it was in 1929. This is after the Roaring Twenties and the robber barons and what have you not. I mean, this is a big problem also because, you know, the, the American dream is that, you know, when the tide rises, all boats go up. So the, the, the folks at the lower end of the income scale, they're incomes are rising as well and the rich the, the the happy few they will see their income but disproportionately the, the the poor benefit more now in this kind of an environment since 2008 incomes have gone down by 10 percent for 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 the 90 percent of the people while the yeah. you know the 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 one percent is uh, living the high life and, in the, in, and that's a great point i know that we've got a chart that's going to reflect this the fact that new home sales today are dominated by expensive homes, right. really painting the picture of that income inequality that you described. Exactly. So uh, you here know, it is, if you want to describe what's the, the cheapest homes, right? The homes below two hundred thousand uh, dollars price, which is essentially the homes that are being sold in the heartland of America, right? Uh, excluding the, the the east and the west coast, their their sales are hugging uh, the. They have never recovered, and they're actually at their lowest point since um, two thousand eight, since the data were started to be collected since. 2001. I mean, this is incredible stuff. Not a single improvement. In fact, the sales are down year over year. And this is not just new home sales, but also existing home sales. If you look at the chart here, and, and, and you know, the existing latest existing yeah. home sales report shows that this, uh, the homes at the price of below 150,000 are down almost 20 percent year over year. So the poor, the the lower income group, they're not buying homes. They're getting out of their homes. So I want to get Stephen in here because as you're saying all this critical information. Steve, you're over here nodding your head. Well, I mean, it's exactly true what's happening. We, we created an economy in which the share of national income going to the corporate sector, which then gets transmitted indirectly to, to the wealthier class, is rising rapidly. And we've never seen this level of activity taking place in this transition. It's a huge transfer of wealth that's taking place. And part of it comes down to this concept of double-digit return performance. We've created an economy where people are trying to get double-digit returns in a single-digit world. And the easiest way to do that is to keep incomes down and keep employment down, transfer the money over into earnings, drop it to the bottom line, and then redistribute it through activist shareholders to the upper class uh, that's taking place in the economy. That transition of wealth is being reflected in the housing data. It's also being reflected in the employment data. The interesting thing about the employment numbers that have come out in the last year or so is the fact that we're hiring more people 55 plus than we're hiring people right out of college. Mm. And the reason for that is, A, skill sets aren't that much different, to be honest with you, from Cheaper a technology labor. standpoint. And the reality is those 55 plusers are just dying to get to retirement age. They need to make back all the money that's been lost to them, and they're willing to take the extra hours, take the extra time, and they have no social life, to be honest with you. So it's easier to hire them. So, Robert, what, what's going to give when you look at this data and, and the fact that home prices continue to skyrocket like this? What's going to give? Well, of course, eventually home prices will have to readjust. I mean, the problem with rising home prices is, is that they're skewed right now because but if you look at average or median, and since there are more homes that are being sold disproportionately at the higher end, you know, these home prices are reflective of where the most of the activity is. Yeah. But, you know, I think this is the bigger problem here, uh, you know, to Steve's point. I mean, when you look at the jobs numbers as well, I mean, the vast majority of people being hired today are temporary workers. A bank is not going to issue a mortgage to a temporary worker. It's, it's struggling to actually. And uh, yeah. more important, Sandra? To, to, uh, even equally important to that is the government support is getting out of the market. FHA, FHFA, they're retreating from the market. GSC reform is around the corner. So uh, to me, the housing market looks more like... 
you know, more, it, it's going to deteriorate from here, then some sort of a miraculous improvement that I don't can see any catalyst I knew for. it. I knew Robert was going to come in and get everybody riled up. Scott, you're trying to jump in from Chicago. Sandra, no, that, I, I am. He's, he's, he's flowing. But here, he brought up the, ba the big point. The banks aren't lending to that middle market anymore. At least they don't want to. Has anybody actually tried to go out and get a mortgage in that middle market? I'd rather go to the proctologist than go to a bank and try to get one of those mortgages for a two to $800,000 home. Because that's exactly the point. The banks are not willing to lend to those buyers. So you're pricing out, or let's say lending out, or outcrowding these lenders with regards to that, that pool that would buy those homes. So the high end is doing well. Maybe the low end doesn't do so well, but that middle group of buyers is getting crushed and priced out of this because the banks don't want to take that risk. Stephen, this all comes back to jobs. If people aren't working and they're not making money and they're not buying homes, your forecast for the jobs report tomorrow. Well, I'm at 175,000. To be honest with you, I've been at 175,000 every month since the beginning of the year. That's below expectation. It is by below the way. expectation. Um, the reality is we're averaging close to 175,000. Getting any one month with the amount of noise that takes place is very, very difficult. But we're not going to be accelerating above it. You've got an economy that's running at about 2%. That's going to give you about 150, 175,000 workers per month. That's it. And uh, could you have an uptick in any one month? Yes, but it'll be balanced off by a downtick in the next month. Kind of like the third quarter GDP number was outsized at 4.1 percent. Q1 comes in at 0.1 percent. It's running at about 2 percent. Fascinating. So, uh, Stephen, Rizzuto, Mizuho Securities, we're going to let you go. Fascinating conversation here, guys. Robert, you're going to stick around with us for another segment. Uh, we, you've got Scott all riled up, so we can't cut him off there. Uh,